Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 608. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. Today is June 26th, 2020. All right, thank you for clicking into another show. Uh, we'll be talking about lots of different things this week. We're going to try and talk about less depressing things because the last 17 weeks have been just a little hard to handle for some of you, including us. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, before we get too far into the show, uh, click that like button. We appreciate that very much. Uh, share this episode. You do that by copying the URL at the top of your screen there and send it to all your friends and family clergy, bishops, archbishops, whatever, whoever. It's fine, just send this show around, we, we appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, go to the YouTube channel and click on that little red rectangle. You'll be subscribed to the show and you will get instant notifications every time I post a new episode. Comments. You guys are very opinionated and we love that about you. Uh, in fact, it seems to be a race every time I put a new episode on, who's gonna comment first? I like that. That's cute. That's fun. We appreciate that. Go to the comment section on YouTube and comment away. That's what we do this show for, to hear what you have to think, not just what we have to think. George, I'm looking at the weather, and it's pretty hot down there. It is hot, <laughs> hence the tan suit. Oh, my. No. If my head were so big, I'd wear a straw hat, but they don't make them that big. I just, I mean, I, there's a reason I don't live south of Connecticut, because I'm not good in heat and humid. The, it gets hazy, hot, and humid. It's just not my style. We lived in Huntsville, Alabama for four years, and eh, it's just, it was tropical there. And I know it's tropical down in Florida. So well, we are the tropics. <laughs> we are the tropics. All right. So uh, news today. Obviously, a lot of news is still going to be related around COVID, around um, the riots, and kind of how the church is reacting to what it's seen. Um, the church has the answer, and sometimes the answer is so obvious that it forgets to go with that answer first. And that's kind of what we're going to report on in a minute. Before we get to that, Justin Welby has, he has an answer. His answer is to get rid of the heritage. Go through Canterbury Cathedral and start tossing out uh, the statues and symbols that reflect the racist, white, uh, imperialist nature of uh, the Church of England, and uh, we shouldn't just throw them out, we should bust them up too. That's that's the, the going thing. I saw Nelson Mandela's wife said, what are you doing? That's stupid. Well, when <laughs> Grassa Michelle, uh, the wife of Nelson Mandela, the hmm. widow of Nelson Mandela, is the voice of reason and sens sensibility, and the Archbishop of Canterbury I don't know whether he's become Justin Cromwell or Ooh. if he's just a loony to. <laughs> Sounds good. But, you know, he really needs to get rid of all the, you know, in the medieval times, blacks were really oppressed in Canterbury, England, and they weren't given their fair share of representation in the cathedral. I'm being silly, of course. Yeah, but... But what Justin Welby says is one of the things we need to do is to make Canterbury Cathedral relevant to our current population, which means removing some of the preponderance of statues of white males and replacing them with statues of people from other backgrounds, traditions, cultures, and races. Now, on, now I think the motives he has are good of trying to have a cathedral that is, speaks to all people in a community. But the solution of iconoclasm, of destroying statues, of obliterating the past, I don't like what this person did 200 years ago. Uh, he may have had, uh, he may have owned slaves in the West Indies. He may have been a pirate. He may have been a general that massacred natives in the Congo. And his parent, when he died, his wife put up a little plaque for him. I think taking down that stuff I don't know, it just strikes me as wrong. I, I've been, let me just, I've been in Harari's Cathedral, uh, St. Mary and All Angels, I think it is, before and after. Mm. Uh, but 
the cathedral was built uh, by white settlers in was then Salisbury, it's now Harare. And mod memorials to men killed in the First World War and the Second World War or men who devoted their lives to missionary work were all over that church. It was a typical English church that happened to be in the middle of the African continent. I saw it then, then I saw it a few years later when everything is stripped out that has anything to do with white people. And the, the message wasn't so much that we need to replace it with our own heroes. Rather, we need to destroy the past and create an enemy that we can all round about, say is responsible for our own problems. Well, the problem in, in Zimbabwe was Nelson Mugabe. Uh, yes, it was. Nelson Mugabe, Robert Mugabe. Robert, Robert Mugabe, yeah, it was horrible. It, it wasn't the whites who had been gone for 25 years. But to, to adopt that sort of mindset at Canterbury Cathedral is no solution whatsoever. No, but the, the, there is a solution. He was, he was just on the cusp of it. The solution is to add statues of other nations and bring them in to add uh, statues of people from other ethnicities and to add statues from other countries and to add statues where it is a good representation, not just to destroy the old statues you don't like anymore. It's to continue to add, and there's plenty of room in Canterbury Cathedral for more statues. But yeah, the pro problem, Kevin, look what's happening in Washington. A statue yeah. of Abraham Lincoln that shows Afri African slaves breaking their own chains. Yeah. This is a hundred year old, hundred plus year old statue. Very famous statue. That was paid for by freed slaves who took up a voluntary contribution to thank Abraham Lincoln and the mm -hmm. Emancipator. That was toppled because it was racist. Now, let's say Westminster Abbey, I think has a statue of Martin Luther King. I'm, I think I'm pretty sure they do. Martin Luther King would fall foul of the Me Too movement. Oh, he would. He was a Republican. And he was a Republican who supported Richard Nixon. Yep. Now, I mean, Nancy Pelosi would pull that statue down on two for two reasons. Um, who he was, he was, he was, he was anti-gay. Do you, do you want to go through the list of bad things? About he, he was pro-Israel. Pro uh, <laughs> he was anti-gay. He was a Republican. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, in other words, which are all good things, by the way. Uh, but the point is, if we're looking to have statues of people who are without sin, there's only one person, and that's Jesus Christ. And yeah. here's Justin Welby saying, well, we need, to, we need to sort of darken the pigmentation on these stone statues of Jesus Christ. Now, what does that mean? Painting them up in blackface? I think that's a, a problem that's also. Too, yeah. well, what, 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 is it, what is he actually saying? Most of our audience probably knows the answer to this. And I know that uh, we've seen churches like the ACNA, we've seen uh, the Episcopal Church, the Roman Catholic, all around the world are trying to say, how did this happen? What did we miss? And in terms of the solution, it's a twofold solution. One is we all need to be reconciled with Christ. When you are reconciled with Christ, you are reconciled with creation. You are reconciled with the kingdom. You are reconciled with each other. We all need to be reconciled in Christ. Solution one. Solution two is to ask for forgiveness of those who, you know, we've, we've had enmity towards in the past. And solution three is they need to forgive us. That's hard. That's a hard, hard, hard thing to do. Forgiveness. It, it is very hard, um, but that's that's the package here. That's that's what the church offers. Can we put together uh, teams and communities and all that to, to research and study the problem more? Yeah, but the, generally, I've not seen anyone come up with a better solution than biblical reconciliation. Never, I've never seen. I've seen them try and. You know, me, well, we came together as a group of 12 and we were all mixed race. And you know what we decided? We need to meet again. And that's not the solution. That doesn't work. We've, we've tried that now for 120 years, trying to, to, to work this out. It, that doesn't work. There is a simple solution often overlooked. It's biblical reconciliation with Christ. 
but I'm not here to preach. That's George's job. Um, <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> let me get Kevin, my turn to stand on the side. Okay, go, 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 go. One of the things that really strikes me is that you're you're demeaning the artistic integrity of people of the artists who created these statues. Many if, of many of them, ethnically, well, are men, men and, you know, I, I happen to love. Uh, I, I enjoy art, mm -hmm. and I look at these paintings by El Greco, and that Jesus looks pretty Hispanic to me, or Greek actually. And I look at these Italian paintings, you know, by Caravaggio, and, you know, Jesus looks pretty Italian to me. He was very and I look at these German paintings of, I think, uh, uh, Jesus, you know, man, he looks just like a German. I've been to the cathedral in Haiti before it fell down in the earthquake. Guess what? Jesus is black. I was, in, I was in Hong Kong, and I look at the modern paintings they have of Christ in their, in their uh, parish hall. Jesus, my goodness, he looks Chinese. He was now, what's, now, what's going on here? Yeah. The artist is trying to create something that touches his inner soul, that represents the Godhead to him through art. Mm. And that is, and you have, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be very harsh, you have these idiots who think that art has to be a photograph. Yeah. That they're recreating absolutely precisely a photographic moment. When art is nothing to do, that is why photography is photography, and art is art. And you have these people saying, oh, well, these medieval stonemasons are creating Jesus that doesn't appeal to a West Indian boy in Canterbury in 2020. Well, they weren't built to appease a West Indian boy in Canterbury in 2020. They were to give glory to God, and that was their gift back of God using their art. And so you have a Philistine like Justin Welby, passing judgment on works of transcendent and great value based on the basis of political cheap motives to curry favor with uh, the Guardian's op-ed page. I, I don't know if I'm being a little strong. Ah, that's fine. Well, I mean, it's bad that we have to keep talking about this and that every, everybody thinks the solution is to to have Indaba type meetings again. And yeah. I used a I used a painting of Mark Chagall's crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That Jesus has looks nothing like me. His Jesus is really Jewish looking, and in fact it's, it's sort of abstract. You know, his eyes aren't the right place. How can I have any attachment to a Jesus is when I see when I there and he's a little dark skinned, he's got black hair, he's got a, a in it's other a words, very beautiful picture, by the way. Why? Why can't I tell? Why can't we just take down Chagall's paintings and just put up photographs of what we think Jesus looks like? One of these reproduced uh, Semitic heads from a cemetery two thousand years ago. This is the, this is the level of insanity that we're seeing from a church leader and yeah. political leaders these days. All right, uh, ACNA had their uh, uh, Zoom meeting and we got to learn about their uh, annual report. Uh, they, as we reported, uh, had two dioceses go back to Nigeria and that caused a reduction in numbers and I think you probably have more details to give on the report. Yes, on uh, June 23rd, Foley Beach gave a State of the Church address to the Provincial Assembly of the Anglican Church in North America, and he summarized events over the past year. And 2019 was a mixed year. It was a down market. Um, we've, the total two dioceses withdrew to affiliate completely with the Church of Nigeria, Diocese of the West and Diocese of the Holy Trinity. And I think that knocked five, six, seven thousand 7,000 people off their rolls. The rate of church planting has declined and in some respects because all the low-hanging fruit has been picked. And so now the harder areas of the, the stonier soil, uh, it's, easy, it's easier mm -hmm. to plant churches in North Carolina and Texas and Florida than it is in Massachusetts or Connecticut. Or Connecticut. <laughs> so, it's, it's, so the easier, that's it, the more natural churches in parts of the country that they're, they're doing pretty well but the hard work in the northeast and the wet northwest and california that's slower but it's still going forward so it's not no report of failure yes some, 
some plants did fold, but you're going to have that in any operation. Absolutely. One bad report in 10 years, you're doing pretty good. But the yeah. bulk of Archbishop Beach's speech was about racial reconciliation, mm -hmm. and I'd give it a sort of a B, B minus. I mean, it was a, it was okay, but here again, I, this is a personal uh, reflection, not a, any systematic evaluation. He said the right things, but he didn't go where I think the solution was. Well, we just talked about the solution. Um, it, it's difficult, and I know that the whole world is looking for a solution for this. Christ provided that solution. And, um, and I know we think that we can just meet together and talk and, and pass the peace pipe and do in Daba. That if anything in the world has taught us that doesn't work, it was uh, the Anglican communion trying to do that to resolve other issues, it just doesn't work. Well, I, to be fair, mm -hmm. which I'm not, uh, <laughs> If you compare Foley Beach's words to those of other church leaders, he hit it out of the park. You didn't know, absolutely, yeah. I'm, let's absolutely. let's take let's take the Episcopal Bishop of Washington. Well, protesters have gone back to Saint to Lafayette Square and they vandalized Saint John's Episcopal Church once more. Marion Buddy is more concerned about the police expelling peaceful protesters who happen to be destroying things than she is about the destruction of one of her churches. So what we have here is a bishop who's passed out of all semblance of apostolic authority into just another shill for the establishment. So in other words, if I have a choice of condemning violence and the destruction of the church and desecration of churches versus taking a cheap shot at Donald Trump. Cheap shot at Donald Trump, that's what I'm gonna do. Thumbs up every time. And then uh, we have this case, if, if I'm in, it's, you know, and then the Catholic Church by and large, it's fallen down in disgrace also. We had the Catholic chaplain at MIT, during, the, I think it was the beginning of June, send out an email to members of his uh, congregation at the university saying, look, we need to take a balanced view that there's sin in all people. We can't say George Floyd was a perfect martyr and this policeman, Derek Chauvin, was an absolute monster. You know, Floyd has a criminal records. Siobhan was a police officer. We don't know what was in his heart. If it was racism, some police become hardened by their work. But pray for both of them and pray for our country. How reasonable, Christian approach that looks at the sin of all people and that the only answer is Jesus Christ. MIT administrators complained by that, oh, well, he said that uh, Floyd uh, was a sinner and that must mean that he deserved to be killed. And the diocese of Archdiocese of Boston fired him mm -hmm. and condemned his words. Well, now, I... the condemning plain truths of Christianity in the name of uh, the church of what's happening now. I think the, the cancel culture has hit its magical note. This is where, uh, at least for 2020 and 2021, when they want to get somebody fired or uh, taken down in public, dismantled, take away the, any verbal power they have whatsoever, this is the year they're going to get that done. I'm surprised we have a voice at all. Because okay. we, 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 do, we talk about these tough issues, but nobody complains, George. Well, I don't know why. Well, it, it, that's the funny thing. Yeah. We can be actually be harder. We've been harder on these topics than we normally have been in the past six months. Mm -hmm. And we don't get any pushback. So I, I can, for, for instance, I can say that I think that the claim of that the, the, the line white supremacy used by the Episcopal Church, I think that's, that's fake news. I think that's a fraud. I, don't, I think white, the claim of white supremacy is a form of hate speech against white people trying to bully them into uh, following the, the instincts of the mob. I've been saying stuff like that for, for a while. Um, and nobody's come after me. Whereas poor chaplain at MIT can use words that any good priest would use in such a situation, and he gets hammered. Hmm. Well, maybe it's because nobody cares what I have to say. Yeah, I, I, I think we do. But we, do, we handle this by talking about it is a sin issue. 
you know, you are not allowed to treat anybody short of complete love. Not your enemy, not your family, not your church parishioners. I mean, Jesus summed up the Old Testament by saying, what, George? Love your neighbors yourself. <laughs> so, oh, Love the Lord your God with all your, all heart, your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbors yourself. These two things hang all the law and the commandments. Good. You're paying attention. I'm glad we didn't have to edit that out because you were <laughs> Sometimes you say something like that to an Episcopal priest and the not George, you were right oh. on it. Good for you. Well, right. it, it, here's, I, it, since I'm on my soapbox, Kevin, you yeah. gave me one. Well, hold on a second. Let me, we're not running over. You got, you got two minutes. Go for it. Two minutes. For me, I have to say the racism issue is not, for me, the major issue. I, may, I was telling Kevin, I've got three parishioners in jail right now. Mm -hmm. Three different jails. Yeah. Uh, usually when an Episcopal, Episcopalian goes to prison, it's for insider trading. Uh, but my, I have one in jail for theft, one on drugs charges, and one on uh, pornography charges. Uh, they were all marked people on the margins, but now that, they've, that the system has uh, sent them away, they've become closer to Christ. I'm corresponding with them and working with them. And in each case... One is in their 20s, one is in their late 30s, one in their 60s. Each case, drugs, was the door into brokenness and eventually depravity and sin and crime. For me, the, pre the, the major issue facing the United States is not racism. It's drug addiction mm -hmm. and the, the hopelessness and the culture that tells, you know, I, I'm a 19-year-old. I got nothing to do. All I can do is drive around with my friends and smoke pot. Next year, I'll start on uh, crack, and then I'm getting into methamphetamine. And at 28, I'll be in prison for 30 years in Florida for robbing a liquor store. And that this, is where the church is should be, not putting out these mindless st statements about statues and white supremacy. Well, I think your point is really... Uh, true because I grew up in northern Wisconsin my, up until my high school years and poverty was a destructive force for individuals um, the, most of the people that I went to school with ended up working as in the grocery stores and bars and stuff like that nobody very few graduated went to college uh, uh, from my the people I grew up with when I was 13, 14, uh, younger years, um, because of the poverty. There just wasn't access to the system um, for these people. And it, it was it's almost a caste system. We talked about caste systems before. Now, my friends, they were white, and they didn't, you know, th there was a bias because of where they came from, where they grew up, the education they got and um, they were not allowed to achieve because of poverty. It is what it is. And, um, you know, I, I would check them out on Facebook once in a while, and I'm like, wow, wow. Jeez, I, I'd forgotten. George, we've hit a lot of topics in the show. Obviously, we'll be talking more and more uh, next week. I have a special guest I'm going to interview on Monday, uh, a friend of mine from California who... Uh, will be a wonderful person to speak to about uh, race issues. Um, I haven't even told George this yet, so he's like, what, 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 what? It's fun. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 608 of Anglican Unscripted.